Hi, my name is Kent Lee and I teach computer science at Luther College. In this next video, we're going to be learning how to program using what are called loops in Python. And to get prepared for this, we're going to make sure that we check out the uh, right code uh, to begin this lesson. So if you go up to the magnifying glass, and type terminal in there. We'll open up the uh, terminal window. It should look something like this. And we're going to do a CD to make sure that we're in our home directory and CD into documents and then CD into programming and then CD into Frogger after that. Now you might notice I've typed just a couple letters um, and if you press tab after typing a couple letters it will generally fill out the rest of the letters for you. So we're now in the Frogger uh, directory and we need to go ahead and check out uh, the code for lesson two. So to do that we'll type uh, git space checkout space dash f and then lesson two is our lesson that we're going to uh, to check out. I'm already in lesson two but when you type that it should say that lesson two is set up for you and ready. Okay, so once we've done that, we're going to start up Wing. Um, probably have Wing down on your dock now that, uh, that you uh, have followed the directions in the first video. And we're going to do an open. And we're going to go again to documents and to uh, uh, programming underneath documents and then Frogger. And we're going to open up draw.py. So you should have something that looks like this on your screen. Okay, so last time we uh, drew a square and then we drew a triangle on the screen and to draw the square we had to go forward and then right and then forward and right and, and uh, we did that combination of uh, commands four times, the forward and the right. So uh, computers are really good at doing things over and over again, but as programmers we don't really want to have to write the same write all the steps for the computer to do over and over again. We'd like for the computer itself to do these to do these uh, commands on its own. So um, so there's a little story that goes along with this. Back in the late 1800s businesses were getting bigger and uh, and they had to do payroll for lots of uh, uh, lots of employees in their business and that doing payroll got very repetitive that was doing the same thing over and over again and um, and so the job that was associated with doing payroll at the time was called computer so these people were hired as computers that would come in and do the same task over and over again for a company so when electronic computers were developed in the early 1900s and early to mid 1900s, um, we naturally called them computers because they were going to replace uh, these people so that they didn't have to do these repetitive jobs that just did the same thing over and over again. And of course then these new machines were called computers. So uh, a computer is, in Python, we're able to represent what's called a list. And I'm going to show you a list here. A list looks like this. It, uh, it starts out with a left bracket, and then we can write things within the list. So I might write, for example, 0, 1, 2, uh, 2, and 3 in a list. And that's a list of four integers there starting at 0, 0, 1, 2, and 3. So in Python, I can iterate over that list, and that means to repeat something for everything in that list, and it's called a for loop. So I can say for i in list, and if I do that, I can go ahead and print i and see the things that are in that list. So when I go and run this, it's going to do the drawing that it did before, of course. But I can see back here in the debug I.O. window that I printed 0, 1, 2, and 3. So when I print something, it shows up in this window here. And I printed everything that was in the list by writing print once. But it was executed four times, the print was, once for each value in the list. So the way to read this for i in list, i is going to be assigned the first value from the list. So 
So the first one, and then we're going to print i. And then it's going to be assigned the second value in the list, and we're going to print i. And the third value, and we print i. And the fourth value, and we print i. And then after that, we fall out of the loop and do the rest of the code, which was to draw our picture in this case. OK, well, I don't have to just print inside of a for loop. I can actually do other things. So maybe I want to do these two things in a for loop. Now, with Python, we do a lot of indenting and unindenting of code. So if I want to indent two lines of code like this inside of a for loop, I can highlight them and press Tab to move them in. And if I want to, take them, if I want to move them to the left, I press Shift-Tab to move them back. Tab and then Shift-Tab to move them around. So these two lines now are inside the for loop because they are indented under the for loop. Blank lines don't matter to Python, but I can take those blank lines out so we can see they're part of that for loop there. Once I have done that, I'm going to repeat those two lines four times. So the other three times that I wrote them are no longer necessary. I can just go ahead and run this, and I still am going to draw my square and then draw my triangle. OK, so there is a loop, a for loop, um, that executed four times to draw that. So at this point, I want you to pause the video, and I want you to change the triangle code so that you use a for loop there as well to, write the, uh, to draw the triangle. So pause the video now. OK, so you've got that. Hopefully, you were able to get that triangle to draw. Um, to do that, we would have to come down here and do something like list, uh, maybe list 2 equals. And we could do, say, for example, 0, 1, 2. OK, and then we'd write another for loop for, and we can give it any name we want, j in list 2. OK, and we'll do these two lines of code there, indent them, and we'll throw away the other sides of the triangle that we don't need anymore. And when we go ahead and run it, we've got our square and we got our triangle. Now it turns out that in Python we do this kind of thing so often where we want a loop to execute some number of times. We, there is a function that is part of Python that will help us with this. So if I type list of range of 4, I'm going to get that list 0, 1, 2, and 3. Um, from this range function. If I just do range of 4, I don't really see the range, the list, but it's there. There is still a, that range still represents four things in a range, um, but the list around it helps me see what that list really is. So up here, I can change this, ra this list to just be range of 4, and then I don't have to go ahead and create that list before I do it. So I just replace the, the list with 4i in range 4. And when I run it, it goes ahead and does that as well. So I want you once again to pause the video here and change the triangle code to use the range function. OK, so if you were successful, you went ahead and deleted this list too. And you change this to range. And we just did range 3 here this time because we only want it executed three times. So there's our square and there's our triangle. OK, so at this point, I want us to go ahead and try drawing a hexagon. So I want you to draw a hexagon that is filled with purple. Um, and I want you to use a for loop to do it. So pause the video here and, and try that out and draw it after you've drawn the triangle. OK, so you've given it a try. Let's take a look at it and see if uh, you came up with the same thing I did. So first of all, if I want the hexagon to be colored in purple, I'm going to do fill color, OK? And I'm going to change it to purple instead of, instead of uh, blue. And then a hexagon has six sides to it. So I want to do a six-sided figure. And because of that, I'm going to do a for loop uh, with a range of six. But before I get doing that, I want to do a turtle dot uh, begin fill here so that I can fill in my, my hexagon. Um, 
Then at that point, I'm going to go ahead and do my four I in range. I is just fine to use there, and we're going to do our six-sided. Now, if you look back, this was the tricky part of this, and you may not have been able to figure this out, but if you look back, when we drew a four-sided figure, a square, we went left by 90 degrees. When we drew a triangle, we went left by 120 degrees. If you think about it, there are 360 degrees in a circle, and we want to kind of come right back around where we came from, and 4 times 90 is going to give us 360, and 3 times 120 is going to give us 360 as well, so that we'll go all the way around and kind of come back where we started. So in this code, I'm going to probably want to go forward, okay? And I'm going to want to go forward 360 divided by 6. So I, uh, well, the angle is 360 divided by 6. Maybe we won't go quite 100 forward. But I want to turn left, maybe not 300, uh, maybe or around 60 degrees, I guess, is what I was saying. 360 divided by 6. I think I want to turn left 60 degrees each time. Uh, then I'll need to do an end fill at the end of this. Okay, now if I do that right where I left off, I'm going to draw it right over the triangle. So before the begin fill, I'm going to do a turtle dot pen up, okay, and then a turtle dot go to, and we'll just go someplace else. Let's go to maybe uh, 200 comma 200, okay, and then we'll do the turtle dot pen down. And it looks like I misspelled turtle, but I think I'll leave that there for the moment so we can see what happens. And so I go to run this, and we get the square, and then we get a triangle, and we got an error here, name turtle is not defined, and that's right on this line here, and this is another example of a runtime error. So I want to fix that, obviously, and I'll just change my spelling there to fix turtle. Now, while I'm doing this, I'm also going to point out that there are what are called breakpoints that are possible in a program. So a breakpoint is going to look like a little stop sign, and it happens they are created when we click to the right of a number on a line of code. So when I hit a breakpoint, okay, it's going to highlight it in pink, and it hasn't been executed yet, but it's going to stop right there until I click the play or the continue or start running. So this ladybug here tells it to continue executing from where the breakpoint was. So when I click continue, the program continued, and there it is right behind there. There's my three different shapes that I've got. Okay, So it's there, it just didn't pop in front this time, but it is there in the program. Okay. So that's called a breakpoint, and breakpoints let us stop the program at any particular point in time. So stops there. Now if I just want to stop the program altogether, I can see the stop sign. That means the program is still running, and if I click that, it'll stop the program completely. So the window behind it is gone, and the program is stopped, and it's ready for me to run it again. Okay. To turn the breakpoint off, I can just turn the breakpoint off there. So if you end up with any breakpoints created, and you can have as many as you want, you turn them off just by clicking on them again if you want them off. So the advantage of having breakpoints is we can look at our, our information and see what's going on at any point in time. If I set a breakpoint, for example, in this loop, we can watch I as it changes. So um, we'll draw our square and our triangle, and then we start drawing that, and we stop with this breakpoint. If I click on stack data here and scroll down, I get to see what i is, and i is 0 the first time through this loop. If I click continue, I'll see that i changes to 1. Okay, Continue again, i changes to 2. So I can actually watch the variables change as the program is executed. And at any time, I can stop the program, and I can turn the breakpoint off if I want to. Okay, so I want you to now um, pause the video, and I'd like you to draw a 100-sided uh, shape. 
uh, which is going to end up looking suspiciously like a circle. So I'd like you to draw a hundred sided shape. Um, decide how much you have to turn left each time and make sure you use a pretty short side length for it. And, um, and then write that code and try it out and see what you come up with. In the next lesson we'll take a look at it.